everybody and welcome to another food preparation and nutrition demonstration video. And today we are going to be making chicken goujons. Now before we start I have to say the process that we're going to show you today in this video demonstration, the processes are exactly the same if you wanted to make fish goujons or if you didn't want meat at all or fish you could use halloumi. The processes that we go through in this video are exactly the same but I'm just going to use chicken as the demonstration. So as always, when you first come in, really important today, you're going to wash your hands, make sure they're nice and clean, and then as always, we need to collect our equipment. So today, you're going to need a metal baking tray. These are in your metal cupboards. You'll need a non-stick parchment sheet. These will be on the front on your teacher's desk. You will need your sharp knife, again, on the teacher's desk, and your chopping boards. Today, we're going to be using a red chopping board because we're going to be using chicken, which is raw meat. So you need your red chopping board, which is going to be on your windowsill. So, to get started, chicken goujons, first of all, we need to obviously slice our chicken. So, I'm just going to open my pack of chicken. And even though I've got a pack of two, we're actually going to use one breast of chicken just to try and speed things up in the lesson. This is the first time students have probably used the knife for meat, so we want to make sure we obviously have enough time to chop the chicken breast. So, with our chicken breast, you want to basically open it out. So in the chicken, but lots of chicken breasts will have this little mini fillet that will be sat underneath. So just open that out as much as we can, lovely. And with your knife, and we're going to use our claw technique today, we're just going to start by slicing that into strips. Now when we're slicing this down, ideally we want all of the chicken strips to be the exact, or as close to the exact same size. Now the reason we want to do that is when they're cooking, if we have some that are really big and chunky and some that are sort of tiny sort of leftover scraps that we just had left on our chopping board, the problem you're going to have is they're going to cook at different rates. And with chicken, it's going to be super, super important that every single piece that we have is all cooked fully all the way through. So if we have all of our chicken pieces the same size, all of the pieces that go into the oven will cook at the same time at the same rate, which is going to make it sure it's nice and safe for us to eat. So again, slicing that up. Now these are quite long, so I'm going to actually eventually put these into half. I'm just trying to keep the thickness, as I said, the same. So slicing that through. Yeah. Making sure they're nice and equal to the thickness. Chop down a little bit. So you see, I'm just taking my time with my claw grip, and notice my cutting technique is slightly different. So I've now got more of a cutting and then sawing action, not like a full sawing that we're using um, DT, but just a nice, slow, steady cutting action, pushing down, because you'll find it's quite slippy and can be quite difficult to cut through. So I've got my pieces there, I'm just going to cut some of these down again so they're roughly the same size. So you see me doing that there. Okay, perfect. So I've got now a good fair few pieces of chicken. Now I have to say, just so you adjust my glasses there, you've just touched raw chicken. Now we shouldn't be doing this anyway, but make sure our hands and fingers and things don't go into our mouth. We've had raw chicken on our hands. Raw chicken can carry bacteria such as salmonella. We really don't want to now be putting things in the mouth. So I hope we wouldn't be doing that anyway when we're doing any of our food lessons or any cooking at home. But you definitely don't want to be putting your fingers in your mouth when you've been touching raw chicken. At the end of this, as soon as our stuff goes in the oven, you're going to want to make sure you've washed your hands. Right, now I've chopped my chicken. I'm going to now start prepping it, but I'm going to start preheating my oven. So I'm going to go to my oven now. I'm going to get my oven onto 200 degrees C. Okay? So you want your oven to go to number 200 on the right hand dial and on the left hand dial is the picture of that fan for the fan oven. So now I've got my um, chicken cooked, I'm going to bring in my other ingredients. So I have my eggs, my flour and my breadcrumbs. And it's really important, I'm going to bring this in for that camera if you see. It's important that we have them in that order. So it's our flour first, then our eggs then our breadcrumbs, and I'm going to bring my tray in as well. Mainly so this camera at the side can see. So I'm going to start by cracking my eggs and putting them into that middle bowl, like so. That's one egg. And two. 
my eggshell straight into the bin and I'm going to get my knife, I've used my knife, it's fine, no I'm not, it's a lie, I'm going to use a fork, there's my fork, there it is, and I'm just going to break those eggs up, don't have to do it for long, but just give that a mix, just so the egg yolks break up and mix with the egg whites, you can see on that camera there, that would be absolutely fine. What I'm now going to do, and I have to coat my pieces of chicken. So that's why it's really important we have the same order. So we must have flour first, then it's our egg, then it's our breadcrumbs. Now the breadcrumbs I've got, I made these at home myself, so I just put some, some old stale bread in the blender, blend it up to turn it into breadcrumbs. If you want to do that at home and bring fresh breadcrumbs in, you can. Or as you'll see from the ingredients list, I have specified if you just want to go and buy pre-made breadcrumbs in the supermarket, that is up to you. This is probably the, this is obviously the cheapest way of doing it. So with each piece of chicken, get there, I'm going to coat it and roll it around in my flour. So make sure it's coated. Don't have to bury it, but you can see on that one it's just nice and coated. Then the fun begins, you're just going to start getting messy fingers. I'm going to dip it in the egg and then the egg into the breadcrumbs. And roll that chicken around the breadcrumbs and get it nice and coated. And what you're going to start happening, you'll see from mine as well, onto my there, your fingers are going to start getting covered. So it is a bit of a messy one today, but that's part of the fun. So get all your chicken, roll it around the flour. So it's flour number one. Eggs number two, and breadcrumbs number three. Let's give it a good roll around those breadcrumbs, covering the whole of the chicken, like so. Right, I'm gonna do a little cut scene, get the rest of mine done, and we'll rejoin when we're ready to go in the oven. See you in a second. Hello, welcome back. So as you can see, I have fully coated all of my chicken. You see it there, I'm gonna see it in this camera as well. So all my chicken pieces, are fully coated, remember that order, flour, then egg, then your breadcrumbs. So what we're now going to do, we're going to get these into the oven. Now they need to go in the oven for 20 minutes. This is why the reason we're only going to use one chicken breast. So if we're a little bit slower, we've still got the 20 minutes to make sure we actually get our food cooked and safe, ready to eat. So I'm going to place these in the oven. As soon as you get them in the oven in lesson time, you can start then washing up your chopping board, your knife, etc, etc. Remember, because of that raw chicken, we say it every lesson anyway, but it is really, really important you use hot, soapy water to kill the bacteria that will now be on your chopping board and your knife. So these are going to get placed in the oven, and we'll rejoin back in 20 minutes when the alarm goes off, ready to see what they look like. See you in a second. Hello everybody, welcome back. So, the alarm for my oven has just gone off, so we need to get them out of the oven and check if they are cooked. Now, as always in class, when you take yours out of the oven, you're gonna place yours directly on top of the hops here. We never wanna put anything hot straight on our surfaces. You'll see from the camera, I've got two heat mats here, which I'm gonna put mine down, just so we don't get anything burnt on our surfaces. So when we check that our chicken goujons are ready, what we're going to do in class, we're all going to use one of these, and we'll come and hand these out. This is just a food thermometer to test if our food is cooked. Now with our chicken, what we're going to want to do is put our thermometer into the biggest, chunkiest, fattest chicken goujon or chicken nugget that you have made, and we're going to get this prong right in the middle. Now what we want to see is the temperature rise to 75 degrees or above. Now the reason that 75 degrees is important is because we know that bacteria will not live beyond that 75 degrees. Remember when I talked about things like salmonella before with the raw chicken? If we know that we've hit that magic temperature of 75 degrees, we know that the chicken is going to be all right. The reason we check the biggest, the chunkiest one, because if that one's reached temperature, then we know that all of the smaller ones would have as well. Now when you do this, what you're going to want to do, going to work as a team really, you're going to have one person take them out of the oven, one at a time, don't bring both of yours if you've got two students in the same oven, bring one out at a time, 
place it down and get this into the chicken as quickly as you possibly can. What you don't want to do is get out of the oven, wait two or three minutes, then put that prong in, okay? Because if they cool down, they might have reached 75 degrees, but we've got no proof of that because they've cooled down and our thermometer's not going to get there, okay? So you want to get them out of the oven nice and quickly, get it down and test the temperature straight away, which is what I'm going to do now. So, so from my oven up. Ooh, Watch the heat as you do that. Place it down. And my biggest, chunkiest one is probably this one here. So I'm going to get it right in there, right into the centre. I'm going to watch this rise. You'll hopefully be able to see this on the camera as well. So we're at 60 now, 65, 70. And as you can see, that's hit 75, 76, 77, and so on and so on. So I know that these are absolutely fine to eat. Another way you can test if you're at home baking these again and you don't have one of these, you can use a visual check. So you can see they've crisp, they've browned on the top. If I get a knife and fork and just cut one of these in half. So again, I'll cut this big one in half. You can hopefully be able to see that that has gone white all the way through the chicken. There's no pink left in there. That is completely white and okay to eat. What you'll need to do is put those into your Tupperware box. They're going to be hot, so maybe get some tongs out of your drawer. Place them into your Tupperware box and then wash up your baking tray and your black parchment sheet. That is it for today's lesson. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, we look forward to seeing your creations in lesson. See you soon.